from the High Peak Trail, welcome to the GCN Show. Welcome to the GCN Show. Coming up this week, what are the deadliest, the scariest, or just the most annoying animals for cyclists? We've also got new tech from Cervelo and Absolute Black, subsidised e-bikes, and we need your help in our next commuter challenge. This week in the world of cycling, we learned that Jordi Mayus is almost as good at downing a beer as he is at sprinting. Yeah, well, uh, it starts off impressively down, but technically, if he sprints like he drinks, he wouldn't actually reach the finish line and he'd just have crashed into the that crowd. Was impressive up to that point, though, well, wasn't it? Well, Thomas de Gent described the effort as weak. Well, this is by Thomas de Gent, Dan, isn't it? I'm okay. just glad that Thomas de Gent did not see me trying to down a beer at the Global Bike <laughs> Festival in Salbat. That really was weak. <laughs> Uh, we also learned this week that the 22nd of September is World Car Free Day. So what better excuse could you have to go out and ride your bike? You could ride to the shops, you yeah. could ride to work, you could even ride up a mountain. Yeah. Technically, you could also catch the bus. That is a good point. You could also catch a bus or an electric scooter, but this is GCN. So. Yeah, not GBN, Global no. Bus Network. No. Don't subscribe. Anyway. I watched last week's GCN show, Si, and I couldn't help but notice that when Justin Williams came on, you lost... you lost composure. That's cool, actually. I like that very much. You lost all sense of dignity when what? he was on. That is so cool. That is cool. What makes you say that? That's cool. We, that is cool, man. Well, I thought it myself, and then it was confirmed when I started reading the comments underneath the show. Uh, for example, this one that came in from Cycling Monthly that said, how many times can Sai say, that's cool? That's cool. That is a very cool thing. Yeah. Cool. That's so cool. Yeah, Matthew cool. Abbott put, hilarious seeing Sai in full-on fanboy mode. And Adam Clark put, I truly believe that if Justin said, I love zip ties, Sai would have said, cool. I do too. <laughs> okay. That's cool, actually. I like that very much. I, mean, I actually don't know what Justin thinks about zip ties. Shall I drop him a WhatsApp? He didn't give you his number. He gave me his number, yeah. <laughs> you well, don't regret that. Well, and it, weirdly, it stopped working in the middle of last week. I don't know why. Maybe he's like lost his phone or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or well, maybe he's on a long flight, so on aeroplane mode. Well, yeah, he did have to go back. Uh, I, mean, I can't imagine that he would have blocked you at all. No. Can you do that on yeah, WhatsApp? I think so. Oh, I think so. Okay. Anyway, I've got a challenge for you for this week's show. Okay. You've got to get through the whole lot without saying cool. Crikey. That is a very cool thing, actually. Yeah. Can I say true that instead? No, not that either. Okay, it might be quite quiet this week then. So no, just to warn you. Uh, right, moving on. The eyes of the world's mainstream media turned to the World Road Race Championships in Australia. But unfortunately, they weren't really focused on Ellen Van Dyke becoming three time world time trial champion, nor indeed the surprise but well deserved victory of Tobias Foss in the men's time trial. They weren't. Instead, their focus was on magpies. <laughs> now, of all the deadly animals in Australia, of which there are many, the magpie doesn't necessarily seem like the one to be afraid of, but perhaps we really should. Well, I'm starting to think more about it because welter champion and general child prodigy Remco Avonpool recently arrived there and he told Cycling News a very large bird came close and it was terrifying. But that's Australia, apparently, is what he said. Well, that is Australia. You just wait till he hears about drop bears and he'll be on the first flight home. <laughs> Although, also, cycling adventurer from Australia, Ali Denham, posted a video recently where he was swooped by magpies. And I've got to say, it did look mildly terrifying. <laughs> that is quite scary, isn't it? And given that Ali goes riding in some of the sketchiest places on the planet, that's saying something that he looks quite scared too. Indeed. And if you'd like to see more of that scary stuff, you can go to Cycling About on Instagram and indeed on YouTube. However, seeing those magpies coming down and attacking people did get us thinking, what are the most dangerous animals to cyclists in the world? Cows. Well, I knew you would say that, but I don't think it's strictly true, is it? Well, there is no end of evidence to back it up. Just the other day, I was on Twitter, I saw something from Simon Warren, who's the author of the 100 Climbs series of books, and he posted a picture of these 
bloody scratched legs and he'd said that he'd had to jump into a bramblefield ditch to escape a herd of rampaging cows. Mm. Now bear in mind, he's a roadie, not a gravel rider, ferreting around in fields where you're kind of asking for trouble. Mm. And he said worse than that, once he was in his bramblefield ditch, the cows were still pressing in on him, but he couldn't climb the dry stone wall behind him because he was in his slippery cycling shoes. So he just had to wait until they found something else to attack. But, to make matters worse, the farmer eventually showed up, saw his bloody legs and was like, oh, they got you then, did they? How bad is that? It's poor old Simon, it's, instead of saying, you know, thanks, you should keep your killing machines under better control, just had to clip in and pedal <laughs> off. So anyway. So I sent Simon a message about this incident and he wrote basically another book in reply, didn't he? He did, yeah, that should get published. It has um, scarred him, that incident. Figuratively so I, and literally, don't what I will, Yes, what I will give you is, Cows are something to be wary about. Yeah, well, look at this. I got sent another thing on Twitter. Stu Tomlinson. Watch this and tell me that's not terrifying. Whoa. He's lucky to come out of that alive, wasn't Isn't he? he? My yeah. Goodness. Thank goodness he got to that gate. No, yeah. that was not scary at all, even with scary music over the top of it. Yeah. Uh, but as you do, I googled most dangerous animals to cyclists, and I did throw up a rather interesting article from bicycling.com. And it's called The Most Dangerous Animals to Cyclists in the US. Oh, go on, Dan. Uh, so they say the main threats in North America are, in no particular order, bears, mm -hmm. mountain lions, aka cougars, venomous snakes, Dogs and large ungulates. Cows, told you. No, moose, Sorry. Oh. So apparently moose don't inspire the natural fear in us that predators do, but don't be fooled, they are large and powerful and can be aggressive. Just like cows. Maybe not dissimilar. Anyway, their expert says that unless you're dealing with a surprised bear, you should get big and don't run because that's what food does. Wow. Tell you what, for cyclists, not running, probably a good thing, because most of us can't, but getting big, I mean, even at my best, I don't think I could scare anything like <laughs> than a ferret. Like one moment you're pining after 90s rain capes that are big <laughs> and flappy, it. make yourself look a bit bigger. Yeah, um, did you know, my one bit of knowledge about mountain lions, most people never see the mountain lion that attacks them. Oh wow. They come up from behind. That is scary. It is, isn't it, yeah. Have you ever been attacked by wildlife? I was stung by a wasp in France about 10 years ago. <laughs> really? Yeah, Crikey. that hurt. Yeah, well, I bet it did, yeah. I had a, quite a big fly hit me in the eye and get <laughs> lodged in there. Not only a couple of years after that, I think. But apart from, oh no, I have been attacked by a couple of dogs. Have you? Yes, once when I was 14, uh, I was trying to get into the woods to ride my mountain bike. So I tried to walk past an Alsatian on a lead with its owner. And just as I got near it, the lead was extendable and it ran at me, jumped up here and bit me. No. I've still got the scar now. Have you actually? Yeah. It obviously went for the really big, chunky, <laughs> yeah, fleshy bit. It went for the meat. That's terrible. And though. then at the same sort of part of my life, about the same age, there was a dog that always used to run, I think I've told this story before on the GSM show, but there was a dog that always used to run after me as I was going, uh, back home from the new forest riding my bike. Uh, but those events finished because one day I decided to ride into the new forest on that road. The dog chased me, but it had to cross the road and there was a car coming. <laughs> so he didn't chase me anymore. Uh, I mean, I'm not, you know, I obviously don't like dogs getting run over, but there's a particularly satisfying end to that story, <laughs> isn't it? Hopefully the Alsatian met a similar fate. Um, I have uh, had a deer jump out at me before, mm. but I don't think that was an attack. Technically, a uh, squirrel threw itself onto my front wheel, but I don't think that was an attack either, unless it was some kind of suicide attack. Um, but I, uh, I did get chased by an aggressive badger oh, once. You yeah. managed to out sprint it. What do you think? Did it, blimey, did it hurt you? No, I out sprinted it. Oh, you did out sprint yeah. it? Yeah, I out sprinted a badger. Okay. Must have been one of those grumpy but aging and quite old badgers. That they are, are quite slowing fast, down quite considerably. Actually, badgers. They're, maybe that's something you else. Did out sprint it? Yeah. <laughs> Brought my A game that day. Yeah. Well, he would have gone for your ankles. <laughs> yeah, true. Right, it's time to head over to your opinions and thoughts on this and your experiences, actually. Uh, what is the most terrifying encounter you've had with wildlife whilst out riding your bike? Let us know in the comment section just down below. Yeah, and any video footage, upload it to the GCN app. I know there's a lot of Australians out there with footage of people getting walloped by kangaroos. Mm. So, uh, so, yeah, because I saw that whilst I was Googling 
dangerous yeah, animals in Australia. There's a few instances in, in gravel racing in the States as well, isn't there? With cows. <laughs> so not kangaroos, no. <laughs> but uh, yes, with cows. Anyway, talking about animals, we're going to head over to Killian Kelly now, our middle-aged animal who is currently tackling Zwift Academy in the hunt for National Hill Climb mm. Glory. I think he could find the Zwift Academy quite tough this year, Si, because I've heard he's put his height incorrectly. Let's find out. So I'm about to start workout number one in Zwift Academy. I'm a few days late getting going because I probably foolishly played five-a-side football a few days ago and a big massive man stood on my foot with, with uh, studs. And uh, there was definitely a couple of days there where I thought I'd broken my foot and I uh, wouldn't be able to do anything, but I'm starting to feel a bit better now. So I'm playing catch-up and I'm so I'll get my first workout done. And uh, I got my results from my baseline test. So I've been diagnosed as a sprinter, which is... Uh, at first I was a little bit disappointed because... I'm aiming to take part in the hill climb championships, but then people reminded me it's very short, so it's kind of like just an uphill sprint. So maybe being a sprinter isn't too bad. And um, interestingly, I also learned that according to Cycling Ireland rules, if on the day of a championships, only one person shows up and completes the course, they'll be declared national champion. I have a chance. And now it's time for cycling shorts. Cycling shorts now, I'm going to start with news of Graffy. Mm, whatever happened to Graffy? Wow. You made a video question. about it many I moons did, ago, yeah. didn't you? Uh, well, many of you will know that Vittoria used it in their tyres, but now Absolute Black are claiming it's going to revolutionise brake pads. That's right. Not just any old graphene, though. Theirs is specially modified graphene. The idea behind it, right? is that it supposedly improves heat management or heat buildup basically under prolonged heavy braking, which I'm mm, not entirely sure about that one, but they also say that it replaces copper in your brake pads, which is supposedly toxic to marine life. Yeah, oh, well that would be a good thing, wouldn't it? That would be a good thing, yeah. Uh, meanwhile, Cervelo have resurrected their Soloist Ooh. from many years ago. It is lighter than their top-end Aero S5, and it's also more aero than their lightweight R5. However, it's cheaper, or should I say less expensive, than either of those two models, so it looks like it could be very interesting. It does, doesn't it? So Cervelo say that this is for your everyday, week in, week out, rider and racer who can only justify one high performance bike. And then when you add in all of those factors Dan's just mentioned, plus it's got things like threaded bottom bracket and also semi-internal cables. They look internal, but they're not. That does seem quite cool, doesn't it? Mm. In other news that's almost tech related, uh, California is subsidizing the purchase of e-bikes for people on low incomes to help them to afford it, which sounds very good, doesn't it? Yep. Uh, POT total is $10 million. That sounds uh, all right. run by an organi organization, should I say, called Pedal Ahead. Yeah, I'm fully supportive of that because the trouble with e-bikes at the minute is that upfront costs are quite prohibitive, aren't they? Particularly if you put them in context of like a fourth hand banger of a car is when you've got the e-bike and you realize it's effectively free to run almost versus all of those operating costs for a car that it then starts to look attractive. Isn't it? Yes, although as we know, there are plenty of people trying to negate some of those operating costs of a car, aren't there? Yes. I was reading an article last week and apparently there's two million people in the UK driving around without any insurance. And in the US, it's 32 million. Wow. What car drivers need is some kind of registration it's clearly visible, isn't it? So they can kind of be tracked. And then if anyone does break the law, like by driving uninsured, they can be yeah. like easily identified. Licence, but write that down, we'll patent that. Yeah, okay, that is a good idea, yeah. Um, we would like to offer our best wishes to the French national road champion Audrey Cordon Rago because she took to Instagram last week to explain why she wasn't at the World Championships this week. It's a very good reason because unfortunately she suffered a stroke and will now undergo treatment. So get well soon. Yeah, absolutely. You hope you're back training and on the bike very soon and just fit and well generally as well. Uh, now then, we mentioned at the beginning of the GCN show this week that it's World Car Free Day this week. Here at GCM, we're also running a bit of a commuter challenge and we want you lot to get involved this time. So the idea was we wanted to see what would happen if you cycle to work every day for a month. Now, what every day is post COVID, I'm not sure, but we'll leave that up to you. Anyway, we put out a shout out here at GCN. Loads of people have got involved. So we're gonna have a video at the end of this week to launch the challenge, but we want you lot to do it as well. So 
watch that video on Friday, then get stuck in, or indeed, you don't have to wait till Friday. Get stuck in as a Wednesday on World Car Free Day. Mm. Should be cool though. Well, a great response from our colleagues here. Yeah, we did, yeah. Mm. Uh, finish with a little bit of Zwift news because they've got a couple of updates to the platform. The first of which is that they've increased the maximum level you can get to, to 60. Which is annoying, isn't it? Just as I was just 40 away from the top level, I'm now back to 50 <laughs> again. There's no way you're uh, t level 20, Dan. No, it's level 10, because they've updated it to, to 60 from 50. Anyway, that's yeah, a stupid joke. Yeah. Uh, they've also now got a hand bike option, which is great news. Yeah, absolutely. And also, another bit of Zwift news. So, Filippo Ganna, as you might know, is going for the world hour record at the beginning of October. He's doing, very coolly, a couple of public training sessions on Zwift that you can join him for. So, 2 p.m. European time, 1 p.m. UK time, I guess that's early in the morning US time. Um, anyway, on the 23rd and the 30th of September. So you can go and join in for those. I'm imagining they're going to be a non drop ride, mm. aren't they? I thought so because Ollie's down on the start list. Yeah. Next up, hack forward slash bodge of the week. And a reminder, we need you to get involved in this part of the show. So upload your hacks or bodges to the GZN app and they might feature on the show next week. Uh, so first up, this from Adam Epp, who said, I had a cheap carbon out front mount that cracked under the weight of my Garmin 1030 and headlights, so I made my own replacement with $4 of alloy stock, a hacksaw drill and sander. After a little paint and my favorite martini livery stripes, I have a heavy duty but still light mount for my gadgets. I gotta say, this kind of before and after does not start off well, cracked mount, and then, a whopping great piece of aluminium, but by the end, it's all right, isn't it? You described it as quite industrial before we started recording, didn't you? <laughs> well, I mean, it does look quite industrial, but then when you get to the end, you're like, oh yeah, but a good racing stripe goes, covers a lot of sins, It does it? look a lot better by the time yeah. that's finished, and I think you can be safely sure that you're not going to crack another one. That headlight no. and that Garmin, are gonna stay well in place. That's right, your stem's gonna go first, isn't it, basically, with that attached to <laughs> yes. it. Um, no, I think that's a uh, hack from me. I gave a hack as well, and it's a hack from 68% of you. I think Justin uh, Williams should have said hack too. Just, you know. Come on, carry on. Okay, uh, right, next up, we got this one from uh, Ackenfield which is a dreaded rear derailleur cable breakage. Lesson learned, just leave the cable in the housing unless you have some cutters or a good knife. That's a very good point. I couldn't get the cable free, which leaves me slightly confused. So I wrapped it around the seat stay and rode it home in a single speed mode. Um, we get a few, a fair few I'd say, rear derailleur cable breakages, of which people manage to fix them in all sorts of ingenious ways. This one, is without doubt the worst. Mm, it's not particularly neat or tidy. No. Yeah, presumably they didn't have an Allen key either to free it from the actual rear derailleur. Yeah, so we're gonna say massive bodge to this one. This is how not to deal with a broken rear derailleur cable. I would have wrapped it in a very neat circle, that cable. Would you? And it wouldn't have gone into the wheel. I would have done it in such a way that it couldn't reach the wheel. Would you really? Yeah. Oh, fair play, mate. I would have done that. <laughs> well, I thought you would have zip tied it onto the uh, seat stays there. Well, that is a good point. Well, I think we're both in agreement that that is a bodge, and presumably you lot are as well. Yes. Yes. 35% of you went with hack, 65% went with bodge. Uh, on to this one from the Riverside. Bike computer good. mount fix using zip ties. Oh, you're refraining thus far. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, broke my computer mount yesterday and decided to try fixing it using zip ties, drilled a couple of holes in both ends and tied it up. It's not as good as new, but it will stay on the bike. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Like, if you broke your computer mount and you're out on the bike and you fix it with a zip tie, I'm gonna say hack. If you're at home and you get a drill out to then get zip ties involved, <laughs> what on earth are you playing at? The zip tie is not a permanent fix. That's a bodge. Yeah, have you not got any electrical tape? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say bodge as well for yeah. that one. Uh, and, where are we? 56% of people went with hack. I don't understand. Well, I mean, is it because a drill was involved? That it looked like there was some kind of effort? No, no not ten, happy about that ten one. Ten years into this and we still don't understand. No, not at all. Uh, right, Andy Stewart. 17 kilometers from my car on a remote gravel road when I heard a loud pop, as the photo shows. My tire decided to self-destruct. Remember the GCM video that had a roadside hack of a used gel wrapper to cover the hole. Not only made it back to the car, I managed to go over 30 kilometers per hour in the process. Look at that. 
<laughs> I mean, that is a Crikey. monumental failure. I mean, you must have had a big gel <laughs> to, to cover all of that hole. <laughs> My goodness. Yeah, I can just about see the white gel wrapper yeah. in the biggest part of that hole. It works, doesn't it? Or you can use a dollar bill. Um, if you're in somewhere that has dollars, yeah. or a five pound note, which is the lowest level of note in the UK. You can't really use a card repair. though, can you? Or a phone. No, I mean, you can't. I don't really go out of cash much anymore, anywhere. No. I just, what on earth did you cycle over to cause that amount of damage? <laughs> it's like it's like you're riding on a razor blade. But anyway, well done for yeah. getting that fixed. That is impressive. Well, it's a hack from me. Hack from me. And it's a hack from 85% of you. Uh, this one comes in from Steve T or Stevett. Uh, my wife Jennifer works in the graduate medical education department at our local hospital. Um, as a cycling enthusiast, she wanted to decorate her office with cycling art that told a story for her people. So the clock signifies putting in the time. Nice. Uh, cycling folklore's man with the hammer represents adversity encountered in training. The Garmin team mountain climber painting indicates the training will be hard but worth the effort. And the victory celebration painting shows what lies at the end of the journey. Uh, the framed painting behind Jennifer is of her on her own trusty steed. Nice. How cool is that? I just zoomed in to see whether that was you uh, in the Garmin climbing picture, but um, I can see they've got calf muscles, so I don't think it is, mate. Um, looks like Tom Danielson to me. Oh, there we go. Yeah, he looks like he's going quite fast as well. <laughs> um, no, I like that. I think what, how, what a cool way of decorating your office. That is fantastic, yes. That man with the hammer looks quite scary, doesn't he? He does. I thought that was you, then. <laughs> <laughs> but then I looked above the ankles and realised it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, right, okay. Um, no, I, that's a hack from me. How cool is that? Yeah, it's a hack from me as well, and it is a hack from 92% of you. It's the nice. most resounding hack of the week. There we go. Uh, next week's Hacks and Bodies are already on the app for you to get voting on, but don't forget, you can get involved, and please do so. We love seeing them all. It's time now for Caption Competition, that part of the show where you get your chance, your chance, a chance, get your hands on a GCN Elite water bottle. All you gotta do is put a witty caption in the comment section down below. We'll pick a winner next week. We'll start, as always, with the results from last week where this was your photo. And this is your winner from Easton Brown. Uh, as the time draws near for Astana's captain and superstar Vincenzo Nibli to finally hang up his bike on the peg for good, some natural airs are beginning to emerge. <laughs> uh, do you think you need to see that written down for it to be really funny? Airs spelt like almost well, like, the same as hairs. Possibly. I thought my delivery was perfect. <laughs> Your delivery was maybe great, Maybe we can mate. write it down as well. I mean, I didn't say hairs <laughs> to start with. But anyway, I thought it was a very, very clever caption. So well done to you, Easton Brown. Get us in touch with us on Facebook with your address and we'll get a bottle sent out to you. This week's photo comes from the World Championships in Australia, which we've got live on GCN Plus if you're in Europe, excluding Italy, Sweden, Norway, and Denmark. So tune in live in the early hours of the morning if you're in Europe. How do you uh, watch it if you're in New Zealand? Or the national broadcaster. Ah, there we go. Po then. Possibly Sky, no idea. Uh, anyway, this is the photo from the men's time trial uh, of Nikia's aunt of Germany. I will get you started. Go on then, Dan. Oh, so you think you're aunts, do you? That's that, cool, mate. Because that kangaroo in the background. Yeah, I got it. On. Yeah. <sighs> it's good to have you back, mate. Yeah, it's not as good as Eastern uh, Brown, is it? Yeah, never mind. Anyway, that was a cracking effort. If you think you can beat Dan, stick your comment in the caption section down below, and we'll pick a winner next week. Ahead of letting you know what we've got coming up this week on GCN, we've picked out a few of our favourite comments from the last seven days, and we'll start with a couple that came in the and the vintage time trial bike versus modern road bike. Uh, Liam B wrote, I think Cy shelled out on a Canyon Aero against his other half's wishes and spent the last two years doing these videos to prove it really was worth the money. Yeah, you know what? Like she watched this video and was like, you know what, I finally understand why you got it because it's faster than Greg LeMond's mm. time trial bike from 1991. So yeah, yeah, finally, yeah, that's it, done, done now. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's fully justified. Um, Simon Davis was one of quite a few people that were doing a good old reminisce. He said, proud to say that I was there on the final day of the 89 Tour de France and witnessed history in the making. Richard Stewart said, ditto, our US Air Force club out of Hahn Air Base, stayed in Versailles for that epic stage. 
The crowd gasped when Le Monde came flying by after Delgado. Uh, awesome day. And then Gary Sladek, also there, hitchhiked from Munich on the way to a buddies in Canterbury. Wow. That was super cool, isn't it? It's amazing how many of our viewers were there for that big day, isn't it? Yeah. Um, other comments. Lee Evans put, I love watching GCN, but... It's always a bit of a worry, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, but I've started experimenting with watching GTN. I think I'm tri-curious. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, uh, I did like the reply from Matt Burdock. It's just a phase. It looks great with all the toys and fancy outfits, but I bet the chafing is worse. Um, well, yeah, because you're not wearing socks, are you? Which, mm. um, yeah, that's always a problem. Um, underneath Hank's very long epic ride, before I get onto the comments, I was just saying to Sai again before the cameras are rolling that he popped into the office very early this morning and I just didn't recognise it. So I just said, hello, mate, and then didn't think about it until somebody else came in half an hour later and said, all right, Hank. He's a bit the worst. Well, I think we, we might be having a negative effect on uh, the age that he looks so That's all these challenges. That is true, yeah. Maybe you can give us some tips on how to... Uh, <laughs> Stop keep, riding. Yeah, keep the ageing process about Yeah, <laughs> don't do 575 kilometres in one go in all weathers. Um, anyway, he got an awful lot of plaudits as well as a cracking video out of it. So Michael Arroyo said, Awesome ride, Hank. Every time I watch one of your masochistic rides, it inspires me to jump on the bike. Then Idlewild said, another video of GCN trying to kill Hank, and I'm absolutely here for it, which got 457 thumbs up as well, and counting. Well, so, he is still alive, but, but only just from what I saw this morning. But pretty anyway, much, yeah. Uh, in terms of what we've got coming up for you this week, on Wednesday, we're going to show you how to secure your bike. Obviously, there's a whole load of different options out there, uh, which will take some explaining. We'll also have our preview of the World Championships men's and women's road race, which is coming up for you this weekend. Women's on Saturday and the men's on Sunday. And on Thursday, it's how to get the most out of your bike computer. It's more and more functions, isn't there? I mean, I used to love all the functions 10, 12 years ago, but there's twice as many now. Well, yeah, and you had a lot of time in your hands 10 or 12 years ago. I did, you? yes. Yeah. Uh, right then, and then on Friday, okay, as mentioned earlier on in the show, it's our commuter challenge. So we're going to introduce you to our friends and colleagues here at GCN who are going to be riding to work every day for a month. But we want you to do it as well. So make sure you check that video out, get involved, and start sending in all your clips as well. Then on Saturday, the twig himself, Andrew Feather, whilst training for a GCN Plus film, tries to break the Outdoers record indoors. Okay, so you've got to check that one out. It's a mighty impressive effort. And then on Sunday, what is the limit for gravel bikes? Ollie thinks he's found that steep old climb in Italy. I found a steeper one. The question is, can we ride it? Oh, it's you doing this. I can it see is, what yeah. you're trying to ride. Yeah. Good yeah. luck. Good Thanks. luck. I'm actually doing it this afternoon. <laughs> Oh, are you really? <laughs> yeah. So we might have to change Sunday's video. We found the limit of gravel bikes. <laughs> yeah, and the limit of sight. Yes, oh. that's right. <laughs> right, that brings to an end, I think, this week's GCN show. Not quite. Not quite. GCN Plus this week. Um, talking of the twig, Andrew Feather. We made a documentary about him trying to break the Everesting world ah, record. Yes. So do make sure you check that one out as well. Very, very cool indeed. There was an awful lot of effort went into that as well. There was. Well, I did the voiceover for that, so I now know what the effort was that went into it. So you put yes. a lot of effort in as well, didn't you? Yeah, not, not too much on my part, but I did find the gist of the story. <laughs> very good. I'm looking forward to watching. Uh, right, that is the end, I think, of the GCN show for this week. But of course, we will be back uh, this time next week with lots more stuff. <laughs>